Welcome. Welcome to Rapid City First United Methodist Church as we share a journey this Holy Week. We welcome you to come. We welcome you to, to hear Jesus as he moves from day to day throughout this Holy Week until he arrives at the cross of Calvary. We begin today as, as we hear our staff share Jesus' words and what those words mean for our lives. We welcome you, and we pray that Jesus will meet you. Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord, open our hearts for the words that you have for us that the beauty of music may resonate within our hearts. Lord, join us as we journey this holy week. We ask in your name. Amen. Stephen, would you share? love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, what wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, what wondrous love is this, that caused the Lord of dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. Our scripture today comes from Mark 11:15 through 18. Jesus clears the temple. When they had arrived back when they had arrived back in Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people buying and selling animals for sacrifices. He knocked over the tables of money changers and the chairs of those selling dro- doves, and he stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace. He said to them, "The scripture declare 
My temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. When the leading priests and teachers of the religious law heard what Jesus had done, they began planning how to kill him, and they were afraid of him because the people were so amazed by his teaching. Well, some of you in TV land are probably thinking right now, what is Destry doing up there talking? Well, I am having the same thoughts. My first thought when Pastor Barry gave me the scripture was, this is the hardest scripture ever, why me? But amazingly, God spoke to me in new ways through the scripture. Funny what happens when you let him. So, here goes something. Jesus had just made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and he went straight to the temple. For most of us, when we think about the temple, we think of a single building, much like our church building here. But the Temple Mount is in the time of Jesus, which, which was much more than a building. It was a series of several large courtyards and buildings. Today, we would refer to it as a temple complex or campus, as the entire site covered almost 40, or 40 acres. It was in these courtyards that two main things were happening. Animals were being sold for sacrifice, and money was being transferred from Roman currency to the temple coin. The problems were not so much that these things were taking place, but instead how they were taking place. If you were bringing a sacrifice, you might have had that sacrifice inspected to be sure that it was good enough. And if it was judged not good enough, then you would have to buy a new sacrifice, and they would be more than happy to provide that service for you for a price. For the convenience, you would pay a higher price, much like the difference between Walmart and Target. The temple became something very much like a flea market. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, he went directly to the temple. A conquering king entering the city would have went to Herod's palace in order to conduct affairs of state and government. But Jesus, who was not a political king, went to his father's palace, a place of worship in order to conduct affairs of the spirit. What he found there was corruption and greed. He knew that his father's house was holy and to be set apart from all else. And what he found was that it, it, it had become a marketplace, a place that centered on buying and selling, not praising and worshiping. Jesus knew things had to change, and so he reminded them of the scripture concerning the corruption of God's house. It is written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of robbers. It's hard not to listen to those words and reflect on our own lives and our own house of prayer. How we turned church into something it was never intended to be. In Ephesians 2, 19 through 22, it says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple to the Lord. And in him, you too are being built to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. The Greek word for church literally means a calling out or the called out ones. We are called out from everything around us. We are called out from our arguments. We are called out to react differently, differently to the world around us. We are called to respond when chaos erupts around us. And we are called to a higher purpose. Our church must be a sacred place and it should never be used for personal gain. God's church should only serve to bring him glory. And by church, I don't mean this building. As we all have found out in these past few weeks, we, as the church, should, be con should not be contained within these walls. But tell you what, we are excited for when we all get together again in these walls with you. Together through worship, we strive to become holy. We work together to become holy. We, co we cooperate to become holy. We help each other to become holy. Just as Christ entered Jerusalem and headed straight for the temple, so Jesus, when he enters our lives, heads straight to our spirit. In 1 Corinthians 3, 17, it says, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy them. For God's temple is sacred, and you are the temple. You are God's temple, our bodies and our lives. They must be purified and cleansed. Just as many of you have been spring cleaning these last few weeks, finding space and breath in places that used to be filled with stuff, I even figured out that some of my closets have back walls, not just a doorway into Narnia, as my children like to say. 
This cleansing is not what gives us salvation, but instead it gives us abundant life here on earth. It is through this abundant life that we receive the blessings that God has for us. It is here that we can live in fellowship with God. It is here that we are made pure and holy. It is here we are called out, here where we are the church. If you would pray, for, pray with me. Lord, what the enemy means for evil against our church body, we believe you can use for good. Remind of her, our hearts of this. We are, when we are being attacked and crushed from all sides, remind us of your faithfulness to use everything for your good and for your glory. May we not fear, but trust in your provision for our church family. May we not only be readers of your words, but believers and doers. Increase our faith. Amen. And if you would all join us tomorrow as we continue the Easter story, stay well and God bless.